Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you are doing well. We are moving on to chapter 7 that includes Kingdom Protesta and Fungi. And I am Mr. Shah Bagul from Department of Biology, our neighbor and hall for the girls. Uh, you, uh, girls, you already know that all, all organisms are divided into five kingdoms according to Robert Whittaker and Margulis and Shaw's five kingdom system of classification, which includes uh, five kingdoms that is Kingdom Monera, Protista, Fungi, Planti, and Animalia. Now, what are protists? We will discuss about that. Topics of today's lecture include protists, the evolutionary relationships, uh, the major groups of protists, which include animal like protists, protozoa, plant like protists, that is algae, and fungi like protists, that is myxomycota and umycota. The meaning of the term protista, that is the Greek word that means the very first as these were the first eukaryotes to evolve so these are the simplest eukaryotes and they are supposed to be evolved from prokaryotes they are defined by exclusion from other groups what is the meaning of this statement it means that the members of this kingdom do not fit into any of the other three kingdoms that is fungi planti or animalia and this is the reason sometimes protists are called as the trash can kingdom as the members are excluded from the rest of the kingdoms now about the evolutionary relationships these all share a common feature that is the eukaryotic cells so all protists are eukaryotes this is their common or unifying feature and they are very common to complex multicellular organisms from other three kingdoms as I have already told you that is kingdom fungi, animals and plants. Uh, biologists divide the protists into two broader categories that is heterotrophic and autotrophic. Heterotrophic includes protozoa, slime molds, water molds and uh, autotrophic protists include algae which are photosynthetic. These are a few pictures of the protists. This is slime mold and these are animal like protists which includes amoeboids, ciliates, sporozoa, flagellates. We will discuss about them uh, later on. And it's a fungi like protist. Uh, all protists they have polyphyletic origin which means that they do not share a common ancestor. So they uh, have evolved from more than one type of ancestors and any eukaryote organism which is not considered plant means member of kingdom planti or animal that is member of kingdom animalia or fungus which is uh, the member of kingdom fungi is classified as a protus solely for convenience there is no other reason to include them in the kingdom protista except that they are excluded from the rest of the kingdoms and they are not uh, similar to those organisms. Diversity among protists. You see that they have diversity in size and structure, means of locomotion, ways of obtaining nutrients, interaction with other organisms, habitats, modes of reproduction, etc. Variations in size means that they range from microscopic protozoa to giant kelps, that is brown algae, which are 60 meters or 200 feet. Mostly unicellular protists are found. Some are colonial. Colonial means that the members live in the form of a colony, and there are some protists which are synocytic. Synocytic means they are multinucleated, they are not divided into proper cells and some are proper multicellular. They have a simple body without specialized tissues, sometimes called thallus. Uh, you can see in this picture, these are the kelps, the giant algae, brown algae, and these are fish moving over them. You can imagine the size. And these are synocytic organisms. You can see multinucleated hyphae thread-like structures found in fungi-like uh, protists 
and you can see the nuclei they are present here now about the variations in nutrition protists are autotrophic as well as heterotrophic autotrophic includes algae because they can synthesize their own food due to chlorophyll heterotrophic algae heterotrophic protists uh, includes uh, those protists which may have absorptive mode like fungi, fungi and in, that includes water molds whereas ingestive mode of nutrition is found in animal like protists and some fungi like protists like slime molds mode of life is mostly free living but some may form symbiotic association some are in mutualism or parasitism mutualism is mutually beneficial relationship between two organisms so some protists have mutually beneficial relationship with the other organisms and one example you will see uh, in about uh, the mutualism is trichonympha which is found which is an animal like protist which is found in the gut of termites termites cannot digest cellulose and uh, trichonympha help them in doing so parasitism is the association in which uh, one part partner is more or less dependent upon the other for its different requirements so uh the planktons are the free living protists and these are diverse collection of organisms that live in large bodies of water and they are unable to swim against the current so they move along with water currents and many majority of the protists living in water and ocean they are basically planktons about their habitat they are mostly aquatic may be found in fresh water or sea water which is called marine habitat Uh, all reproduce asexually but many of them reproduce sexually by uh, meiosis and syngamy meiosis you already know it is the type of cell division in which the uh, number of chromosome is reduced to half in the daughter cells uh, as compared to the parent cell where syngamy is the syngamy is the complete fusion of two cells or gametes resulting in the formation of zygote and the fusion nucleus is called syncarion most protists do not develop multicellular sex organs nor do they form embryos this is also an important feature and here you can see asexual reproduction in protozoa it's uh, an animal like protist a flagellate and which is divided lengthwise into two dots locomotion is found in uh, and uh, in at least some uh, stage of their life cycle so mostly motile like uh, they show amoeboid movement or flagellatory movement and this movement is found in uh, animal like protists as well as amoeboid movement are also found in some fungi like protists we will see later on uh, here you can see amoeboid movement in amoeba uh, this movement is with the help of pseudopodia these are protoplasmic extensions uh, which are uh, utilized in the motility it's very slow movement and this is the flagellatory movement found in a uh, flagellate which is animal like protist what are the major groups of pro protista these include animal like protist that is protozoa algae which are plant like protist and fungi like protists include two groups which is mixomycota and oomycota now first of all we will discuss about the animal like protists which are protozoans as the name indicates protozoa means first animal these are the simplest animal like creatures and this term means first animals they have ingestive mode of nutrition by endocytosis and you have studied about endocytosis in the first lecture that uh, that is the ingestion of food uh, by the uh, invagination of plasma membrane they are mostly aquatic uh, maybe fed fresh water or marine fresh water includes amoeba and paramecium whereas marine includes actinopods 
some may be parasites like plasmodium you know plasmodium is malarial parasite entamoeba stolitica which causes amoebic dysentery is also included animal like protists digestion of food occurs inside a food vacuum a small cavity and uh, with the help of lysosomes obviously elimination of water occurs through contractile vacuole in fresh water protozoans remember contractile vacuole is found only in fresh water protozoans and it is called as contractile vacuole because it keeps on contracting uh, to release extra water and fresh water protozoans like amoeba paramecium etc shell protozoa includes foraminifera uh, foraminifers are shell protozoa found in fresh water as well as sea marine water animal like protists that is protozoa they may reproduce by asexual or sexual methods the movement is through pseudopodia cilia or flagella parasitic protozoa do not have specific means of locomotion as they do not need them since they are found inside the host so they, they don't have any locomotory organ uh, these include plasmodium which is malaria parasite uh, regeneration is also common in the protozoa it is the formation of lost structures cyst formation occurs in some uh, animal like protists and that is to survive during unfavorable conditions cyst is a thick wall protective wall and it is secreted by the uh, protist uh, unicellular protist during unfavorable conditions yeah you can see the major types of animal like protists amoebae zoo flagellates animal like flagellates actinopods they are called so because they have actino means ray and pods means feet because their pseudopodia are ray like just like sun rays mm -hmm. foraminifers that these are shelled protozoa apicomplexans uh, this includes uh, the plasmodium and they are unicellular and they are called so because their spores or spore like structures have an apical complex which helps in penetration into the body of the host uh, ciliates are also uh animal like protists they are members of protozoa and these i have cilia as the locomotor structures so you can see the locomotor structures here uh amoebae have pseudopods zoo flagellates have flagella actinopods have pseudopodia foraminifera have pseudopodia apicomplexans are parasites they do not have any structure for locomotion whereas ciliates have cilia here are the examples Amoeba includes uh, amoeba includes amoeba and entamoeba. So spelling wrong. E N T. The trypnosoma, conoflagellates. These are the members of zoo flagellates. Uh, radiolarians are members of actinopods. Uh, there are other members too. Foraminifers or forams. They are members of foraminifera. Plasmodium, member of apicomplexan. Paramecium, multicellular and centra. Ciliates. Now, first of all, about amoebas. Uh, all those protozoans which have amoeboid movement, they are they are included mostly. They are included in amoebas. Uh, they are free living, aquatic, freshwater, or some may be parasitic, like uh, we have already studied about entamoeba. Uh, they move and feed with the help of pseudopodia. Amoeba proteus is the free living form. and entamoeba histolytica which causes amoebic dysentery is a parasitic form you can see the picture so this is entamoeba and this is amoeba proteus so uh, if you see on page number 181 here is a caption given that is did you know here an organism's name is given which is called negleria fowleri it is found in rivers lakes springs drinking water networks etc it causes amoebic meningoencephalitis and damages the brain's covering etc so this is also known as brain eating amoeba here is a figure 
Next, zoo flagellates. What are zoo flagellates? As the name indicates, these are animal like flagellates. They are unicellular. They ingest living or dead organism uh, through ingestive mode or by absorption from dead organic matter. So both modes are found in zoo flagellates. There are three types free living, symbionts, and parasites. Free living flagellates include conoflagellates. Cono means collar. Uh, since these have a protoplasmic collar, um, this is uh, made up of the protoplasmic extensions arising from plasma membrane of these cell, uh, these organisms. And you can see a flagellum arising from the base of the collar. This delicate collar along with this flagellum, flagellum helps in feeding uh, of this organism. Uh, they may be sessile or stalked. Or they may be motile if they are single, uh, solitary means living singly. So they single flagellum in each cell and collar. So this is a solitary or single organism, and this is a colonial conoflagellate. Such colonial flagellates are supposed to be the ancestors of multicellular organisms, according to evolutionists. These are parasitic flagellates. You can see Trypanosoma, which causes African sleeping sickness in man. So this is Trypanosoma. You can see this is the flagellum. This flagellum is arising from the anterior side of this organism. And here it is forming a membrane-like structure. Uh, this is called undulating membrane. So this membrane along with this flagellum helps in the motility of this organism. So this is a nucleus of these are the red blood cells. So the picture here indicates that it is found in the blood circulation uh, in the uh, nervous system. Ciliates have a pellicle that is the outermost covering. And what is pellicle? It is just an enriched or strengthened plasma membrane. So additional proteins are deposited on the underside of plasma membrane to make it more uh, elastic and somewhat strong cilia are the structures for locomotion some ciliates are sessile for example stentor and these all have contractile vacuole for uh, the osmoregulation there are two types of nuclei and ciliates as you see in paramecium micronucleus which is smaller one which is utilized for sexual reproduction which controls sexual reproduction and mega nucleus is uh, polyploid means having many sets of chromosomes, whereas diploid means having two sets of chromosomes. This is normal condition as we humans also have two sets of chromosomes in our body cells, uh, that is two sets of 23 chromosomes each, whereas in paramecium, so two types of nuclei, one micronucleus and the other macronucleus. Micronucleus is diploid, whereas meganucleus is polyploid. And this is used for metabolism and growth. Examples are paramecium and stentor. So here you can see the fake pictures of different ciliates. So this is paramecium, this is micronucleus, uh, this is micronucleus and this is meganucleus. This is contractile vacuole, stentor, which is a sessile form attached to the substratum. And this is vorticella, which is bell-shaped and it is also sessile you can see attached with the help of a contractile stalk to the substratum to the base symbiotic uh, protists include trichonympha which is found in the gut of termites termites are white ants you see wood eating insects uh, they digest food but termites cannot digest their food so trichonympha, which is a protozoan, a zoo flagellate, animal-like flagellate that lives inside the gut of these, these termites to digest cellulose for them with the help of an enzyme. Foraminifers and actinopods are marine and they have shell or test around them. Test or shell is made up of calcium in foraminifers and it is made up of silica in actinopods. 
test contain pores for extension of cytoplasmic projections that is pseudopodia which help in the uh, capturing of prey the uh, the dead foraminifers and actually the pores they sink to the bottom and they form chalk you can see the pictures here which show uh, different actinopores and foraminifers so these are the shells here so there is a diversity in the shell so these are actinopores as you see sun like animals so that's why they are also sun animal cues or actinopores pseudopodia ray like now we move on to the plant like protists which are algae algae are aquatic they may be found in hot springs, polar ice, trees. Uh, those which are found on trees are called epiphytes and they may be found on rocks. You may be unicellular or multicellular. They have filamentous body, which is simple body called as thallus. A thallus is a simple plant body which cannot be differentiated into root, stem and leaves. They may be cellular or synthetic. And as I have already told you that synostatic means lacking cross walls or lacking proper uh, cells. Uh, photosynthetic pigments are found in algae uh, which includes chlorophyll A as well as yellow, orange, carotenoids and xanthophylls and phycoerythrin that is the red pigment found in algae. Algae differ from plants in the following features. Remember this is very important statement and it may be asked about in the exams also uh, in board exam that, that is how algae are different from plants so algae differ from plants in the following features that is the sex organs found in algae are unicellular they are not multicellular and when we say plants it means the members of the kingdom planty which are all multicellular and they have proper multicellular sex organs whereas algae have unicellular sex organs second feature in which algae are different from plants are uh, is that uh, zygote is not protected by the parent body whereas in plants the multicellular plants members of kingdom planty have zygote protected by the parent body and the last one is that embryo is not formed and embryo is formed in plants and that's why the members of the kingdom planty uh, which are called as plants they are also known as embryophytes because all have embryo formation in their body euglenoids are the first group of algae uh, the plant-like protists example is euglena dinoflagellates example is gymnodynium Diatoms, the most common photosynthetic organism found in oceans, brown algae, which are giant algae, kelps, red algae, polysiphonia, green algae includes alva, volvox, chlorella, which is chlorella is unicellular, volvox is colonial, alva is also solitary. So here you can see different types of green algae. This is desmid and chlorella. Euglenoids include euglena. So you can see in this figure, euglena has uh, this nucleus with nucleolus. The chloroplasts are scattered here and there. There is flagellum. Actually, there are two flagella, but the smaller one is fused with the longer one here. And so apparently there is one flagellum. So they are motile. Dinoflagellates are called so because they have two flagella one is found in this uh, <clears throat> ring like girdle and the other one is longitudinal so these are dinoflagellates also photosynthetic and diatoms the most numerous unicellular algae in the oceans remember this for your mcqs the diatoms are the most numerous unicellular algae in the oceans and they are also found in fresh water and a uh, very important or unique feature in diatoms is the cell wall has two valves, uh, two halves. And just like petri dish, if you have seen a petri dish in the lab, uh, chemistry or bio lab, so a petri dish is just 
pair of uh, dishes so one covers the other so the one is smaller and the other is larger lid is uh, larger that covers the smaller one so same is the case with the shell or the uh, cell wall of the diatoms so these are diatoms their, with their beautiful glass like walls make up a small part of diverse group known as protists so this is about the diatoms <clears throat> brown algae brown algae are also known as giant algae and it has three parts this is in hold fast which is uh, attached to the substratum then then there is type and then there are blades etc so here you can see these uh, are found in the oceans red algae includes polysiphonia you see the structure green algae includes chlamydomonas alva and volvox this is spirogyral uh, it is named so because of this spiral shaped chloroplast this is called as spirogyra some may pronounce it as spirogyra because of spirally arranged chloroplasts now we move on to the fungi like protists first of all the mixomycota mixomycota are also known as slime molds as the name indicates they have very slimy appearance and uh, this is the reason is uh, the multinucleated phase which is amoeba like or phase uh, but it is uh, known as plasmodium although spelling is the same uh, as that found in the uh, name of the malarial parasite but here the plasmodium refers to the large multinucleated creeping stage of mixomycota or slime molds so this is feeding stage it helps with the help uh, it feeds with the help of pseudopodia and it uh, keeps on uh, increasing in size by feeding later on mature plasmodium that uh, gradually transforms into the next stage uh, which is called a uh, sporangial stage and this is just like fungi so slime molds have basically two types of phases in their life cycle one is amoeba like phase and the other is flagellate like phase uh, sorry uh, fung fungi like stage in the life cycle so here you can see just like fungi there are uh, sporangia sporangia are spore bearing bodies and here you can see inside a sporangium a spore cell uh, spores are being produced through meiosis these spores are dispersed in air and when they find suitable conditions they germinate into amoeba like cells or uh, and these are called as amoeboid cells and these act as gametes and they fuse in pairs to form uh, zygote nucleus and this is syngamy you can see this is zygote which is two n since here meiosis occurs so the amoeboids or spores are also haploid haploid means having single set of chromosomes and these haploid spores develop into haploid amoeboid cells or gamete like structures and these uh, amoeboid cells then fuse to form diploid structures so this zygote is diploid sometimes the spores may germinate into flagellated uh, gametes these flagellated gametes swim together and then they pair up to form the zygote zygote again transforms into plasmodium stage and it keeps on feeding and growing in size and then repeats the cycle again so here you can see haploid stage is this blue stage and whereas this white uh, stage uh, is showing the diploid stage so spores as well as gametes are haploid <clears throat> whereas zygote is diploid and this uh, the amoeba like uh, sorry um, fungi like stage is also diploid water molds or oomycotes is the uh, last topic of today's lecture and these are also fungi like protists as you can see in this figure here are the hyphae growing and these are the sporangia which bear produce spores 
and these invade cells, mesophyll cells. Here you can see a potato uh, which is affected by the water mold or humic water. Uh, water molds destroyed huge quantities, huge uh, areas of crops of potatoes and that's why they were responsible for a famine which is known as Irish famine. Water molds are better known as mildews. Fish tank, uh, you have seen in the fish tank uh, fuzz which is an example. See the fung fungus which is found inside the fish tanks. Protists like molds because they share common characteristics with plant like protists. Since water molds have a cell wall. This is very important feature. So this because of this cell wall they are plant like. This is about the Irish potato famine of 19th century. Potato crops causing devastating starvation. You know, potatoes uh, form and uh, form a major uh, part of the food of the whole whole world, and that's why destruction of potato crops resulted in a famine in the 19th century. This is the life cycle of uh, umicotta. So, in the life cycle of Umaikota, you can see here, uh, this is, they have flammatous stru structures just like fungi and these produced flagellated spores, means they are motile spores having flagella and so these uh, spores are produced by mitosis, that's why they are diploid, you can see two and means having two sets of chromosomes. So, this is uh, how they germinate into again the complete body and they may produce these words. In your book it is also given that they have first the primary zoo spores and then the secondary zoo spores. They differ in their flagella. One has apical and the other has lateral flagella also and they may undergo encystment uh, during unfavorable conditions and later on uh, on finding suitable conditions they may develop into uh, the complete filamentous body and so this is the asexual cycle of uh, water molds uh, now about the sexual cycle you see uh, meiosis is involved in the formation of male and female cells the uh, male uh, gametangium the, the reproductive structures in whom I caught uh, are called gametangia the male gametangium is called enthridium, whereas the female gametangium is called uogonium. So the male gametangium, the, which is made up of the filamentous structures which surround the uh, female uogonium, the contents, the protoplasmic contents along with nuclei, they move after meiosis into the uh, uogonium. So here the fusion of individual haploid nuclei from both male and female gametangium that occurs resulting in the formation of zygotes which are diploid. So diploid zygotes are produced inside uogonium and this is why it is known as the sexual reproduction as it involves the formation uh, fusion of nuclei. So these zygotes then transform into Oospores. Oospore is the reason for the naming of this group that is Oomycota. Uh, Myco related to fungi since they have fungi like characters in them uh, as well as uh, some plant like organisms like uh, plant like characters include uh, the composition of cell wall which is cellulose instead of chitin. So in Oomycotes you have studied that both uh, plant parasites as well as animal parasites are found. Plant parasites include Phytophthora infestans which causes uh, potato blight disease whereas the uh, animal parasites include uh, in cause uh, fuzz in fish tank like that is the example. So here we end today's lecture. 
so we will study about the features of fungi in the next uh, lecture so that's all for today thank you very much for your attention